Hello guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if this is your first time here. I hope you're really well and today we're going to be watching King Kong from 1933. I don't know the first thing about King Kong unfortunately. I know that he climbs a building at some point, I believe it's in this film, and there's planes flying around his head. Oh and he grabs a woman out of a building or something. I've seen the clips around in you know documentaries or videos at some point. If you'd like to see the full list of things requested to me you can check those out over on the Patreon page where you can also become a patron member if you'd love to as well. That's where all the uncut reactions are and the early accesses and also you can get your name into the credits as well. But anyway let's watch King Kong from 1933. Oh, is it RK... RKO? What do I think the RKO sign is similar? RKO is radio, isn't it? <laughs> radio Pictures. King Kong. Ah, oh, it's David Selznick. I feel a bit out of my depth with this film, honestly. <laughs> I feel like I have to mentally prepare myself. And I don't feel mentally prepared. I do like that transition, though, of one slide to the next. Is the light... That. The eighth wonder of the world. And the prophet said, And lo, the beast looked upon the face of beauty, and it stayed its hand from killing. And from that day, it was as dead. I feel like I should have gone into this with a bit of knowledge of King Kong itself. Oh, hello there. Just an old fisherman, hey, don't is this the moving picture ship? The picture? Yeah. So they watch films on that. But everybody around here is talking about that crazy fella that's running it. Carl Denham? Sorry, a film from motion pictures. Why, and he just goes up to him and tells him to look pleasant. <laughs> Why all this talk about this voyage being crazy? Uh, everybody around the docks is talking about the cargo for one thing. And I never did see a ship this size with such a crew. Mm. I don't see where they're going to have room enough to sleep. I wonder what they're holding in there. My name's Weston, the theatrical agent. Well, Mr. Denham, what do you think the marshal will say to these new gas bombs of yours? Don't hold the bomb out. Run into the tropical rainy season when you're trying to make an outdoor picture. Still, you always bring back a picture. So he's a filmmaker. There's only one Carl Denham. Famous director. Extraordinaire. How about the girl? It can't be done, Denham. It's got to be done. Somebody's interfered with every girl I've tried to hire. And now all the agents in town have shut down. You know I'm square. Everybody knows you're square. You've got a reputation for recklessness. Okay, so he's not to be... Not so much not to be trusted, but he's just a bit of a loose cannon. I can't send a young, pretty girl on a job like this without telling her what to expect. To go off on a trip for no one knows how long, the only woman on the ship with the toughest mugs I ever looked at. Uh, I mean the crew. <laughs> like I didn't mean that, of course. <laughs> There's a different thing taking a girl into danger. Should be the damsel in distress. Then I suppose there's no danger in New York. Listen, there are dozens of girls in this town tonight that are in more danger than they'll ever see with me. We should have a lot of people around her, though, to keep her safe. Yeah, but they know that kind of danger. You never had a woman in any of your other pictures. Holy mackerel, do you think I want to haul a woman around? Then why? Because the public must have a pretty face to look at. Everybody likes romance. Well, isn't there any romance or adventure in the world without having a flapper in it? Don't call her a flapper. I know back in these days they did call them flappers. Not great. And the exhibitors all say, if this picture had love interest, it would gross twice as much. Yes, if it had a woman in it, it would be great. The public wants a girl, and this time I'm going to give them what they want. I've got to get her, Weston. We've got to be gone by daylight. Why? Well, there's a good reason. Everything I hear about this thing makes me like it less. I'm glad I didn't get you a girl. Well, I'll show you. You think I'm going to give up? I'm going out and make the greatest picture in the world. Something that nobody's ever seen or heard of. Is it King Kong? Is he making a picture of King Kong? I'm going out and get a girl for my picture, even if I have to marry one. Wait, didn't they remake this film a few years ago? I, I vaguely remember seeing a trailer with Jack Black in it. <laughs> there was an island, and I think that was to do with King Kong. Say, lay off the shoving, will you? Could that be our leading lady there? Haha, <laughs> I catch you, you stealer! A thief with nothing to live for. Let me go. I wanted to, but I didn't. You didn't take anything. I'll treat people this week. Hey, hey, here's a buck. I've done you a favor. You do me a favor. Let me guess. Is she okay? Hey! It's Taki. the right kind of go. Oh, that's just really weird, though. He meets her on the street and just snatches her away in a taxi. Feeling better? Yes, thank you. I know he's trying to be nice and kind, but still, <laughs> he seems pretty odd at first. Let me go get you a taxi, hang on. I'm not bothering about you just out of kindness. There are a lot of girls like me. Not many with your looks. When a girl gets too shabby. No, you look pretty. 
You ever do any acting? I used to do extra work. What's your name? Ann Darrow. I've got a job for you. It's money and adventure and fame. It's the thrill of a lifetime and a long sea voyage that starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. You're gonna love it. I don't understand. You must tell me. I do want the job, so but... She's got so much emotion in her eyes, the actress. No, you've got me wrong. This is strictly business. Well, I only wanted to... Sure. I forgot you didn't understand. She wants adventure. And I picked you for the lead in my next picture. We sail at 6. Where to? A long... Completely bewildered, like, what? Me? Of everybody? What do I have to do? Trust me and keep your chin up. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that I'm taking you somewhere incredibly dangerous. What would health and safety think? Get out of the deck and help with these hatches! <laughs> I'm paying attention more as well to some of these shots with a second ago, where it was rear screen projected. And up here! Oh, I just wanted to see! Oh, you just wanted to see! That shot. Probably isn't, but... I think this is awfully exciting. I've never been on a ship before. Oh, well, I've never been on one with a woman before. I guess you don't think much of women on ships, do you? No, they're a nuisance. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You've been on the way already. Well, you better stay below. I'm sure she could do the job as, as well as you could. The whole voyage? With a bit more knowledge. I didn't apologize very good for hitting you just now. Well, we're off. We're off. Ah, you be hooray. Hey, Charlie, how many potatoes do you think you've peeled in six weeks? Too many. <laughs> Ailers eat an awful lot, don't they? God. Someday me go back China, never see no more. I mean, I've peeled hundreds of potatoes myself, but that's a hell of a lot of potatoes you need to peel. Ocean very nice when you order weather or some eggs for breakfast. <laughs> I mean, that's rear screen there, but... Where you been all morning? Trying on costumes for Mr. Denham. He's going to make some tests of me this afternoon. Tests? To see which side of my face looks best. Because <laughs> you've not done any before. Both sides look all right to me. Yes, but you're not the movie director. If I was, you wouldn't be here. Well, is that a nice Cheeky. thing to say? He's going to say something else. Oh, this is no place for a girl. I wish you wouldn't keep harping on that. It's very mean of you. I think he likes her. That's why he's being mean to her. You can't say I've been one bit of trouble to anyone. No, of course not. I mean, you were trying... To be a thief, but... Just, just being around is trouble. Uh, you're all right, but women just can't help being a bother. Neither can men. <laughs> I've had the happiest time of my life on this old ship. That's, that's fine. Are they going to become a thing, eventually? And they, they great a little bit now, but they'll... Did you really mean that, Ann? ...learn to like Of course I mean it. Everyone's so nice to me. Mr. Denham and the Skipper and... Don't you think the Skipper's a sweet old lamb? <laughs> I'd hate to have him hear me say that. <laughs> He'd probably be like, wait, what? But you hate everybody. Don't you, Iggy? <laughs> Oh, he's so cute. The way they were monkey. Beauty and the Beast, eh? Well, no, I never thought I was good looking. <laughs> well, will you put on one of those costumes? The light's about right for those tests now. When do we find out where we're going? Oh, so no one knows. I thought you would have let them in by now. You gonna tell us what happens when we get there? How can I? Well, hang it, you must have some idea what you're after. What's the matter, Jack? You're going soft on me? Oh, uh, you know I'm not. Why would they even agree to go on the ship in the first place if they didn't know where we were going? Brand. Oh, you have gone soft on her, eh? I've got enough troubles without a love affair to complicate things. Love affair. You think I'm going to fall for any dame? I never knew it to fail. What did I say? A hard-boiled egg gets a look at a pretty face and bang, he cracks up and goes sappy. Now, who's going sappy? You. Listen, I haven't run out on you, have I? No, you're a pretty tough guy. But you're well. But if beauty gets you, you... I'm going right into a theme song here. What are you talking about? It's the idea of my picture. A beast was a tough guy too, but when he saw beauty, she got it. He went soft. And he crumbled. The skipper says we've reached the position you marked. Good. Way west of hmm. Sumatra. Way out of any waters I know, but I've never been here. Southwest. Southwest? Well, there's nothing. There's the island we're looking for. So potentially that film I said about was King Kong, the newer one with Jack Black. And that's what they're doing on this one, they're going to go to the island. You won't find that island on any chart. That was made by the skipper of a Norwegian bark. A canoe full of natives from this island was blown to sea. When the bark picked him up, there was only one alive. Oh, he died God. before they reached port, but not before the skipper had pieced together a description of the island. Here's what the island looks like. There's a long sandy peninsula. The only possible landing place is through this reef. Skull Mountain. It's hundreds of feet high. Cutting it off from the rest of the island, is a wall. But why? That wall is as strong today as it was centuries ago. What's it keeping out? Or keeping in? They need it. Why? There's something on the other side of it. Something they fear. <laughs> Jurassic Park. Did you ever hear of Kong? Mm, it's funny, is that where Jurassic Park got their idea of the whole thing from? Why, yes. Some native superstition, isn't it? A god or a spirit or something. An island just for this? Well, anyway, neither beast nor man. Something monstrous. Still holding that island in a grip of deadly fear. Do, 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 do. I tell you, there's something on that island that no white man has ever seen. Or any man? If it's there, you bet I'll photograph it. Suppose it doesn't like having its picture taken. I suppose he's on about natives to the island, potentially. 
for the people that have seen it. Those cases of gas bombs. Suppose I don't photograph well. Wow, she looks gorgeous in that. If I hadn't been sure, I wouldn't have brought you halfway around the world. The other guy's going to see her and go. <laughs> well, we'll start with the profile. <laughs> you smile a little, then you listen. There he is. Could be like, oh my god. She's going to look up and smile. Looks kind of silly, don't it? <laughs> They're all like. You think maybe he'd like to take my picture, huh? Them cameras cost money. Shouldn't think he'd risk it. <laughs> <laughs> was it meant to slyly, slyly say about it breaking? Do you always take the pictures yourself? Ever since the trip I made to Africa, the cameraman got scared. Seems he didn't trust me to get the rhino before it got him. <laughs> I'm fooled with cameraman sense. I do it myself. You don't see anything. Yes, yeah, so this is meant to be like a, a test for being on the island, where she's then going to see... Now you see it. You're amazed. You can't believe it. It's horrible, Anne, but you can't look away. You're helpless, Anne. Helpless. She's got really good emotion in her face. You can scream, but your throat's paralyzed. Perhaps if you didn't see it, you could scream. Scream for your life! <laughs> Damn, she's good. What's he think she's really going to see? Oh, that is a great, great shot. How did they do that? Was that a front plate of smoke with a ship or was that actually a, sh a foggy day or a model? Last night before this fog shut down, I got a good sight. We should be near the island. Or I should say a back plate of a ship with fog in the foreground is what I mean. Charlie, I wish you'd make your soup as thick as this. <laughs> you had a really weak soup. How will we know it's the right island? You'll know. A mountain that looks like a skull. Oh yes, I'd forgotten, you told me. Skull Mountain. Oh, it's a skull on the picture. It didn't look like a skull. Did you hear anything? No. Let's go! I can't hear anything either, other than them screaming. That's not breakers, that's drums. Oh, right. Wait. <laughs> so it's digestic sound. I thought the drums were the just music in the film. But the drums were part of the sound that they can hear as well. Okay. <laughs> the bird. I think the whole population would be on the beach. Hmm, I wonder why. Maybe they have spotted us and they're signaling. Maybe to stay away. There it is. Skull Mountain, the wall. I love the artwork and the uh, the added birds. I'm going ashore with you, aren't I? You oh. bet. Oh, she is, right. I don't think she ought to go till we find out what's going on. I'm gonna say, surely she should stay behind. I found out from experience always to keep my cast and my cameras right with me. Yeah, but you're crazy to risk Now, Jack. I was gonna say, she's the star of the show, though, so surely you'd keep her away until you know that it's safe. That's impressive. And how they would have achieved that shot as well, with it being a real boat on water, but then this entire thing, I think, above is all a matte painting. Well, I'm two men left here to guard the boat. It's all attended to, sir. That wall skipper. What do you think of that, eh? Impressive. Yeah, but what's on the other side of that wall? That's what I want to know. Who do you suppose could have built it? Oh, I was up at Ancor once. That's bigger than this. Nobody knows who built it. In reality, it's probably just a very tiny wall on their set. Yeah, that. They're saying, come, come. It sounds something like the language the Nias Islanders speak. Isn't it exciting? Sure. I wish we'd left you on a ship. He is getting really protective of her. Are they dressed as gorillas? Holy mackerel, what a show. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Never seen anything like that before in your life? No, never. I was wrong about that being a small wall. That's a very big wall. Yeah, they are. They're dressed as gorillas. Presumably as a ritual to King Kong. Is she meant to be the... like a sacrifice to King Kong? Hey, you with the camera. Come here. Oh, God, be careful. They're just gonna see the camera. It's out in the open. Be a bit more cautious. Put it through the reeds or something. Now they're gonna see, yep, like that. Oh, Patty Vigil! Uh oh. Run! Too late, they see us. Let's be here. They they see us. Oh, you're trying to hide now. I'm not Everybody being funny. Out in plain sight. You're out in the open with that camera. <laughs> like, oh, there's lots of people. Buddy! Mark a minute in sorrow! Let's hope they don't take them captive. Because to them they're intruders. <laughs> the little boys, like. Steady, boys. Bluff them. Don't think bluffing them is gonna is gonna work. Come on, Skipper. Make him a friendly speech. We come in peace. We're okay. We don't want to Abe. harm you. Bala kum no no he. Bala riri. Rasko. He understands you, Skipper. What does he say? Telling us to get out. Well, okay. talk him out of it. Ask him what goes on. 
Malem ani humya. <laughs> really? It's a really big ape. <laughs> That's what it's going to be like. There's the girl there is the bride of Kong. That is the god thing! Costco! Uh-oh. What's that? Must be the witch doctor. He says the ceremony is spoiled because we've seen it. Oh, and you've been filming it. What's the word for friend? Bala. Bala! Didn't they say Bala earlier? Julia! What did he say Bala? Wasn't that what he said? He went Bala, Bala. I might be wrong. No, don't do anything with the rifles. Oh, the girl. No. What's that? He says, look at the golden woman. Yeah. yeah, blinds are scarce around here. Follow my potato. Kong war pizza. Oh no, they're gonna try and give her up as a sacrifice instead. Gift for Kong, he says. <gasps> no! Good lord. That's right. Table malum nahi? No. Wants to buy her. I feel like I can understand it. Send a seat to malum articardia. Malum a potato. It's well done. Six of his women for Anne. No. You got her into this venom. Tida. Malem ani rota nahi. Oh, he doesn't like that. He's mean, isn't he? It's like, don't you ever come near here. You leave right now. Don't know why I went Jason Statham there, but... Get going, Ann. Don't be scared. Everything's all right. Yeah. Move away before they can capture you. Keep a chin up. <laughs> He's doing the... Where have I seen that when they do that? When he tips the hat. Do, 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 as he walks away. Is it Laurel and Hardy that does that? Mysterious dark ship. Hey, why aren't you in bed? Oh, I can't sleep. The sound of those drums makes me nervous, I guess. I think Dunham's off is not taking you ashore today. Well, I was a little scared. I guess you weren't the only one. I was right. I wonder what we do next. Just what's worrying me. They're gonna have a bit of a love relationship. Well, after all he's done for me, I'd take any kind of chance for him. Don't talk like Dunham. that. He's crazy enough to try anything. Like I said, don't risk it all. See, if anything had happened to you... Well, then you wouldn't be bothered with having a woman on board. Hmm. <laughs> don't laugh. I'm scared for you. He's standing at a fall for you, honey. I'm scared of you, too. <laughs> and I, uh... Ooh, just doing that look. I guess I love you. He keeps looking at his lips. What? He loves her? All of a sudden... You hate he... women. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like ten minutes ago, he hate her. But you aren't women. You don't feel anything like that about me. me, do you? Do you? Well, she does. She's like looking at his lips and everything. So yes, she does. <laughs> Mr. Driscoll, are you on deck? <laughs> oh, he yes, is. Yes, sir. <laughs> but he's also on the lady as well. You go on, I'll wait here. Yes, sir. Out of the films this age, she's incredibly expressive. And I know I said similar in Sunset Boulevard. Maybe it was an era because this was after... I don't know how many years after this was after silent films. No, they're going to take her over the side of the ship. But I think it was, it was something to do with silent film era. They were more expressive. Move. No. How are you not seeing this? Dude, look over. A bit too late, you'll notice. Jesus. Nothing? Is this gonna be asleep on the side of the boat? We almost midnight. Hey! There's a ship, a boat. Torches going through the village. Uh oh, it's a ritual. Wanna what's up? Because they're gonna sacrifice the girl. I'd sneak ashore and get a scene now. You're lucky to be all safe aboard tonight. I bet it'd look beautiful though. Hey, say, where's she gone? Charlie, you seen Missy? Me not see one, two hours. Of course, he'll just think she's gone back to her room. And? Oh, she dropped what she was holding, didn't she? Oh, no, was that from around her neck? All hands on deck! I saw something drop, but... All hands on deck! Everybody on deck! They think man overboard. Or woman overboard. Look, sir, me find on deck. Native bracelet. Oh, it's a native bracelet. Apologies, I thought it was... Some of the other girl was wearing. Where's Anne? In her cabin. No, she isn't. I just looked. Yep, so now they know. I'll look below. Nowhere to be found. Anne's gone! And the boats. Take this ammunition up there. Jesus, the amount of guns they've got. And just sitting there as well, not in a cupboard. If they somehow come loose, <laughs> they'll all go off. I know they're not loaded. Don't do me like you're catching me. Ah, this is no job for a cook. Get out of here. He might be helpful, though. He's got a knife. That looks epic. And speaking of uh, Jurassic Park, kind of looks a bit like the uh, gate. What do they got in there, King Kong? Oh my god. 
I'm sure I've seen that shot somewhere before though. Or it's similar to another film I've seen. That's highly dangerous. <laughs> Going up scaffolding made of wood and uh, reeds with fire. That's so cool. How was that done for real? Sorry, I know I'm, I'm looking in depth with how they made it and that. I think it was. I think that's a real huge door because there's too much movement in the camera with a real huge bolt in it. And that's the sacrificial temple. That must be so scary to be in her position for that because she's gone from being a thief to then being taken on board on this adventure suddenly whipped away to this. Oh my god. And this is where it's going to come in very good use. Her screaming that she did earlier. <laughs> She'll scream with this. Is that it? Is that what they wanted to do? Why did they just... Wait, that's behind the huge wall. Oh, I've got shivers. Was that them sacrificing her? I know we said that she was going to be sacrificed because there's no way she can get out of that stunning cinema shot like that. Absolutely gorgeously done. Mind-blowing. Don't know how they did it. Presumably, then, they probably did it for real. Karatane Kong! Otarave Rama Kong! And this is them summoning Kong. He's like, I'm deaf! <laughs> oh, God bless her. There's a lion? Or have they just used the lion sound effect? Oh, that's so cool! Stop motion! That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Her screams are terrifying. If you think about it, she's acting to nothing when she's doing this. But even got the shadows of the what she's on as well. <laughs> the little thing is like, eh. she's gonna be the play toy. Oh, she got free! Well, that was a cool way of them being able to then have him hold her without a transition. She falls off and then he grabs her. Incredible stop motion work. And to pair it all together back in these days as well. Terrifying. I know there's many people that'll be going, but it's stop motion. It's not terrifying, it's just stop motion. You gotta think about it in the context of as if this was real. They've come back. <laughs> Don't let them get calm. Big question is, did they bring their camera with them? That's not the focus of this trip. They're trying to save the girl, but I feel like they'll want to film it. Yeah, look at that. Keep up, fellas. Yeah, that's a track, all right. Oh my god, it's huge. The pipe is headed this way. Yeah, come on, fellas. Hey, look at that. Wait, is that dinosaur? Quiet, he doesn't see us. What the hell? Give me one of those bombs. It was this similar to like a Jurassic Park type thing then? Did they just keep extinct animals behind this weird wall? That's so cool how they did that. So they would have thrown something and then an explosion would happen on the screen with this uh the the model oh, i'm in love with the way they've done this well there was a matching that up as well did they maybe do the stop motion after sorry so many questions about how they made it <laughs> you're gonna get this from me but i'll try not to make it too often look out he's still alive mm. No, he was probably like a sacred animal to them. Come on, I got him. Oh, that's so cool. I know people watching this probably are going, what's cool about that? Why, something from the dinosaur family. They're, they're moving around him, but they're not moving. They'll be on like a roller thing and the, the background is moving as if they're moving. If I could only bring back one of these alive. Superb. Uh, he's still alive. Look and that movement whilst in motion. Knowing how long stop motion or claymation is probably what it was. Knowing how they how they do that. 
and how long that takes. Superb. Well, I can hear him. The oh, he's turning his Tim Allen. Uh, Water ahead. He's down in that fog somewhere. That's him splashing through. He must have swum across. Yeah, well, that's out for us with these guns and bombs. What about these logs for a raft? Well, that, that's going to be a... Don't do that. You'll fall in still. Not too badly made. I've seen worse. <laughs> Supposed to be they're being really foggy. They can mask where screens start and end and having claymation stuff there. We'll be able to pick up his trail all right. Wait, that's not him, is it? What the heck is that? Was it the Loch Ness Monster? I mean, the Loch Ness Monster is only in Scotland, in Loch Ness. Well, it's right in thinking about the, the screen thing with the fog. That's so cool. Yeah, it looks a bit like a brontosaurus, is that? Let's hope that wasn't the filmmaker that he grabbed. No, oh, you're done for, sir. <laughs> I know I keep smiling throughout this. I'm I'm in love with the, the way this has been put together. They're all in peril, and I'm going. Why? Well, this looks amazing. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> and they put the plate behind it, so you can see there where it. That was fantastic. You cannot run. <laughs> the little thing going. The little claymation man. Careful, dude. I I just run off into the into the bushes. He's dead. Slightly terrifying me watching it now. God knows what it was like back in the day. There he is, there's King Kong. <laughs> they were jumping in time to the uh, so of the music. That was cool. How the hell did they do that back in the day? Oh, he's claymation, right? So they, they had him put her down. And then that matched up with the real her. He's like, oh my god! He's like, I'm glad I'm here. Oh, I missed the filmmaker. Where is he? Oh, is he still there? Oh my god, all of them are dead now. Apart from one on top. Or two. I think they're about to both be thrown off. That's the filmmaker there, is it? It's difficult to tell who's who. Well, if it was, they're all dead now. Other than the guy in the cave. Him, yeah. He's the love interest guy. Stay there. Stay there. Don't move. Don't move. He knows you're there. No. No. Oh, God, that's so cool. Funny looking creature, so. <laughs> he took my hand. What the hell is that thing? Like a giant lizard, what is this place? Why are they all huge? I'd say that's a dinosaur, but that that's no dinosaur. Oh, that was amazing, I think. Behind you. There's a freaking T-Rex there as well. This is Jurassic Park. He's coming to save her. It's a battle between a T-Rex and King Kong. I'm only thinking it's a T-Rex. He's got, he's got little arms. All the little... The, the, the sound mix. It's just remnants of sound effects of uh, lions and stuff that have been mixed together. And like, screaming cats. Large cats. Why are they? Cheetahs? Someone? Who's gonna win? Honestly, this this animation must have taken 
hours, centuries to make. That was really well done. The depth of... Move. Because they're going to fall on you otherwise. Oh, she can't move, she's trapped. Sorry, but she's so expressive, I love it. Was this the first kind of film of its kind? Oh god, is he going to snap his jaw? Oh, oh my god. Yeah, he is ripping its mouth open because you can see the blood. Oh, oh, that's so grim. So gruesome, but astonishingly well done. It's like, me, I am the best, I am the biggest and strongest. He's not going to, is he going to help her? It seems like he cares for her. That's why he came to rescue her. He came to save her, didn't he? I mean, he's smiling at you, but I can see why she's terrified. That scene where he was trying to escape from the clutches of King Kong, so well executed. I, I keep saying that throughout this, but it's so well done. Hey, Jack! I think they're all done. Yeah. Oh. Didn't get you, huh? No, oh, I got to cover the same as you. I'll oh, blow him an egg. He... He's alive. Two of us left alive to save that girl. Well, I can't get across now. Why, you wouldn't follow that beast alone. Someone's got to stay on his trail while it's hot. Damn, how are they going to do this? He's got to escape back by himself past the natives. He's going to get himself caught. The animated birds and everything. The depth of the shot with the layers of the animation. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. He's not there. Keep expecting to see something in the background. I tell you, Skipper, this Kong is the biggest thing in the world. I thought they didn't they all go? Driscoll said he'd try and signal us if he found Anne. I thought all these men went on the journey. Well, we'll have to wait till daylight. Then we'll bridge that ravine. I suppose people needed to stay on the ship. This monster you've seen. You think your bombs will stop him? You bet they'll stop him. Gunpowder is something new in their lives, huh? Yeah, they're terrified. We leave at dawn, whether we get a signal from Driscoll or not. They left the ship's crew behind on the boat. I thought they'd taken the ship's crew with them. Damn, the miniature set design, the animation, or stop motion, whatever you want to call it. They are different, I know. <laughs> the little stop motion person. That's a nice shot. Now, what is that? A huge snake? A serpent. Of doom. He is fighting against every blooming creature known to man. Oh, no, a salamander that's got legs. I don't know what creature has legs like that, but. So well done. That was cool how they did that. He's like, nobody's there, nobody's watching me, good. That's a beautiful shot. Honestly, I don't see how that guy's gonna help save her. Because there's no way he's gonna sneak her past him, unless he's asleep, and he does it. So is that the... That's the real her on an arm that's doing this, like a fake arm, I think. Like a, a large animatronic arm that's doing this. With the first half of his body as a claymation thing. And then they, wow. Then they somehow do the removing of the clothes thing. Put that uh, acting into good use, love. The screaming that you were doing earlier, the. Ah. <laughs> the. <laughs> yeah, this. <laughs> Yeah, this is incredibly effective filmmaking. <laughs> I love the little, the little tickly thing. Oh, he doesn't mean to harm her, he's just... I mean, he is... Oh no, you dipstick. He's gonna avert that. He's treating her like his little plaything, I know. I don't think he means to harm her, so... But she's not gonna be able to go. It's pterodactyl as well, I think. Uh, love, you're not gonna be able to run. Even that, it's a little claymation girl. No! 
I did not expect the pterodactyl to come down and grab her. Oh my god. Thank god she landed there. That was amazing! She was claymation one side of the rock and then she was real the other side. Fantastic. Go, get this, this is your chance, yeah. Go. If he turns around any second now, he's going to see you. Now what are you doing? Yeah, no, no, back to being claymation again. What? How do you expect to survive? Thingying down that. Oh, is there a lower ledge? Wow. That'll fly past them. Woo. At least now he can't try and get her. Oh, no, he can if he sees the rope and pulls the rope. I was going to say, if he was going to run round, he wouldn't be able to find her. So this way is a lot safer. It was a lot safer. Shimmy down the rest of the rope. Go, go, go. They're done for. <gasps> no! Oh, my God, the water's there, but... Oh, oh! One of them hit the rock, I think. Partially. Damn, that was blooming close call. Hats off to the filmmakers of this. They're like, it's too late. They're never coming back. They're done for. Jesus. Didn't expect his card to that. <laughs> hey, look! They're back! Mr. Pisco and the lady! They're coming back! No. Good man. He saved their life. I'm alright. No, she I mean he saved your life, so. Oh yeah. Jeff! We'll have you back on the ship in no time. Hopefully. Go. <laughs> Before uh, King Kong escapes. Wait a minute. What about Kong? Yeah. Well, what about him? You do need to shut that gate though. We came here to get a moving picture, and we found something worth more than all the movies in the world. What? What do you mean? We've got those gas bombs. If we can capture them alive. Can Why you're crazy. How the hell are you gonna take that? Back. If he stays there, we've got something he wants. Wait, that clip I saw with the plane. Hey, look out! It's Kong! Is that from this? And they capture him, take him back to the city. And that's where he climbs the the building. Empire State, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Run for your lives. He's angry and on his way. I have a feeling the gates aren't going to hold him for longer. So they're going to fight with them now? Yeah, but I was right. He's not going to be happy. He's just going to break right through those doors. Well, at least he shot it. Not that it helps, but... <laughs> Breaks apart like polystyrene. Guys, I would run. So, so cool. I love this style. And that was really well done. It was all part of like the main. <laughs> Sorry, this is too much for words. Oh no, the little baby, pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. The, the scream, yeah, go pick up the baby. Hurry up, please. Oh my god. That was so cool. The amalgamation. Oh, yes. That's effective. Oh, God. I'm sorry, but the, yeah, the, like I was saying, the amalgamation of real and stop motion. Oh, my God, those poor people. Well, people. Oh my god. It's intense for back then. <laughs> Just gonna come over the ridge. Oh my god. Oh yeah. How are they gonna. That, would that work? That's the smoke gas. Smoke bomb. I mean, that's probably the best way to, to deal with him if you can't kill him. Sedate him until he can get off the island at least. But they wanna capture him. They've even done such a good job with animating him to look like he's dying. Come on, I got him! I 
that shot is so cool. Send to the ship for anchor chains and tools. Build a raft to float them to the ship. Why, the whole world will pay to see this. No chains will ever hold that. We'll give them more than chains. We're millionaires, boys. I'll share it with all of you. Why, in a few months, it'll be up in lights on Broadway. Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. Oh, hence the eighth wonder of the world thing. Guys, all the money in the world would never get me dragging that thing back to civilization where it could kill billions of people. It better be good after all this bally. Heaven, what a mob. What a mob. Well, you would come. These tickets cost me 20 bucks. <laughs> oh, oh, and what? Don't go and see it then. You think it's that expensive? I know 20 quid in them days was, but still. I can't sit so near the screen. Close my eyes. It's not a it's screen. It's not a moving picture, madam. Yep. What? Mr. Denham makes those pictures of those darling monkeys and tigers and things. This is a real... But this is more in the nature of a personal appearance, madam. Well, I never thought I was going to see something. Oh, you'll see something, all right. Say, what is it anyhow? I hear it's a kind of a gorilla. Gee, ain't we got enough of them in New York? <laughs> That's a good line, I like that. So this is gonna hold it in a cage? Do you think we'll really make a lot of money? Well, enough to pay him back for these clothes anyway. <laughs> $10,000 in the box office. Not bad for one night, huh? Was it gonna break out and escape, or...? Look at the size of that animal. Hope can't keep it good and tight. caged up anyway, can you? Oh, he's, he's taking chances. It was Mr. Driscoll saved you from the ape, wasn't it? <laughs> it's like, ah ha ha. Mr. Denham had the nerve to stand there and chuck bombs. Come on, give us a story. He chucked the bombs, yeah, but it was the other guy that saved her. If it hadn't been for her, we couldn't have gotten near Kong. Beauty and the Beast, huh? That's it. Play up that angle. He's wanted that angle all along. That's your story, boys. That's a story, all right. That's a story, all right. Uh, just a minute. I want you to come out on the stage and take your flashlights out there. All they're after is one, one big story. They'll get one big story. In fact, they'll get a story so big, it's the size of a story building. <laughs> a billion story building. I can't wait for them to reveal it and see their look on their faces. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight to tell you a very strange story. A story so strange that no one will believe it. But ladies and gentlemen, Unless seeing see is person. believing. Yeah. Did they not see it coming to the theatre? I'm going to show you the greatest thing your eyes have ever beheld. He was a king and a god, but now he comes to civilization. A show to gratify your curiosity. I give you calm. Look at calm, the eighth wonder of the world. People go, ah! <laughs> They're like, it must be some kind of trick of the light. Christmas and Daryl. So, hang on, he's not even in a cage. What the frick? He's just in restraints. Huh? There the beast and here the beauty. She has lived through an experience no other woman ever dreamed of. I want you to meet a very brave gentleman. Mm-hmm. However, Kong is not going to be happy. Especially if Driscoll goes to kiss her because he likes her. I'm going to ask the gentlemen of the press to come forward. So <gasps> no. Of Kong and his captors. No, the flash. Are they going to flash it and it's going to then frighten him? Because flashes frighten animals, don't they? All set, Jack. Oh. Okay, make it a good one. No, 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 no. I was right. I was like, run, get out of there. Those chains are made of chrome steel. <laughs> they ain't holding anything. Okay, I'll sit down again. Get them together, boys. They're going to be married tomorrow. Oh, are they? Oh, no. Don't put your arm around her. It's a great shot. All of them roaring. Well pictured. No. Like I said, he doesn't like flashes. Yeah, now run. Oh, this is so good. Oh, that's <laughs> dramatic. I... Oh, we're gonna get we get to see it. The mix of everything with the with the city. All my life, by the way, I've loved this kind of thing. Models and the way you put both together as once. I think you're about to be a. Uh... Was oh, this the lady in the building thing I was saying about? <laughs> you ain't gonna do anything. I don't think the police are gonna be able to stop him at all. This is so cool. I don't know why I expected Kong to be bigger than that. I mean, he's humongous as it is. That is terrifying. 
a different lady, but still. That's great! No, don't drop her! Oh my god! Imagine that, being woke up in the middle of the night by a giant, giant ape outside your window. It's like a horrible dream. Oh no, you're not safe. Look outside the window. It's like being back on the yeah, that's it. <laughs> that looks so funny. I'm going to stay right here with you. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you wake up in the middle of the night to see this thing terrifyingly grabbing you. Run, woman, run! Oh, too late. Yeah, and then you get pulled up out of bed, and then he just drops you and kills you. Oh god, it's not going down either. He's going to go up to the top of the building. Run, yeah, to the top of the building. Go. He's got a hand. He's taking her out the roof. Not that you could be able to do anything if you do get up there. Run. Yes, yes, go. Run. Hurry up. Never mind. Her screams are horrifying. Oh. He was there. He's over the edge of the building. How can we follow him? What do we do? You just hear the screams. Fire, fire, the searchlight. Get him the roof. Get That's a brilliant idea. Use the searchlight to keep the eyes on him. That's fantastic. With the model train and everything. Oh no, is that another train? Uh oh. Stop the train. He's looking to completely ruin the bridge altogether. Yeah, stop. He's just gonna come up. What? It's just gonna derail. I love this film. <laughs> the distraction as well. That's such a good shot. Oh, you're all dead now. Oh my god. That was awful. He is making for the Empire State Building. If you're in a building, get out. <laughs> he goes up there, what can we do? Or hide we him. won't be able to get hide near away. him. Kong is climbing the Empire State Building. He is still carrying Ann Darrow. How do they know her name though, Ann Darrow? There's one thing we haven't thought of. What? Airplanes. If you should put a hand down and they can fly close enough Because of the theatre performance, I think, yeah. Because she was an unknown before that, wasn't she? Yes, I was. I was. These are the planes. Yeah, why did I think that Kong was a hell of a lot bigger than that? Like he almost wrapped around one side of the building. I mean, he's massive as it is anyway, but. Here come the planes! Play up, get in. I know I say that about the size of him, and we've already seen how big he is before, but in my mind, from the shots that I've seen with the plane, I'm sure he was bigger. I mean, I don't know what's safer, keeping her in your arms or putting her on the building. I'd say keep hold of her, but then again, if you get shot and you fall, you're probably better off putting her down. Yeah, hold on. Then again, put her down. How the hell are you going to get her off that roof? Yep, she's put her down. Now shoot. Are any bullets going to affect him, though? That was such a good shot. It was stop motion at the same time as... Like, all the planes were stop motion as well. That was, that was so cool. Or they're models, I'm not sure. but As in, the on that other shot, they're stop motion. Yeah. Come on. Then again, if he falls off of there, have they not thought about... I know they need to stop him, but if he falls off of there, he's going to... Oh, he caught a plane. Oh, shoot. I didn't think that was going to happen. Was he going to do it to all the planes? Yeah, if he falls off, they'll stumbles off it or something. Is he going to make massive damage to the, to the ground below? Oh, he's been shot. Look out. Ooh, that's so close to him. Oh, wait, is that the Empire State or is that not the Empire State? Because the Empire State's in the background, isn't it there? 
Sorry, wrong building. Why did I always think it was the Empire State that he was on? Unless that's where he goes next. Then he's injured. So, I'm sorry. Unless he takes her back down to safety first, maybe? Oh, so he is just gonna leave her there. Say sorry and... Oh, because he knew that he was gonna die. Oh, it's kind of sweet and sad at the same time. I kind of feel sorry for him because he's sort of fallen for the for the girl. We're going to have a bit of a. He's grown fond of her. It's very uh, dramatic. The Like, just got there. Oh, there's a door there. <laughs> I didn't know there was a door to that bit, either. No, I thought that bit was... You couldn't get to it, but... It's all over. Oh, poor Kong. I mean, look at that. In the foreground, you can see the blood still oozing from the from the scar, from the, the wound. Carl Denham? Denham? Well, that's the man that captured the monster. Yeah, it's all your fault for bringing him to the city. The airplane's got him. Yep, certainly did. In the street court. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty Civilized. killed the beast. No, it wasn't. How did the beauty kill the beast, for God's sake? Oh, was it because of beauty killed the beast in the end? No way saying it. Like, her love. Because he felt so affectionate towards her. That's why he died. To save her life, maybe? Okay, absolutely phenomenal. That's just stunned me, that film. It was so, so well put together. I just thought, it's this little film about King Kong. I didn't think so much was involved with that. The effects were stunning. The woman in it, absolutely phenomenal actress for being able to, one, act to, I want to say act to nothing, but I wonder if some of the shots that she was acting to were the screens of what they'd done as animation. By developing a new kind of rear screen projection, O'Brien could project footage of stop motion puppets directly behind live action actors, allowing them to react and interact in real time. So good. Thank you a hundred thousand times for requesting that film. It was one that I, I don't know if it was just because it was slightly obvious what was going to happen in, in places, but I'm, I'm very glad that I was able to pick little moments and think, it's like the, the, the man is going to get in a relationship with her because they, they they didn't really like each other at the beginning. There was a bit of a grating there between each other. And sometimes in relationships, that happens when you first meet the person. You're a bit sort of, oh, you, you, you don't really match up with them very well. But then you grow to like each other because of that. King Kong, the model of King Kong, the expressions on its face were so beautifully done. Quite scary at times. But I think the standout thing, other than the stop motion on that film, was the girl, the woman. She was incredibly emotional, incredible actress. The fear in that scream was unlike anything I've ever heard before. It just sent shivers up my spine whenever I'd hear it. <laughs> so, we're going to dive into the trivia shortly. I don't know why in my head. I might have to look up different things of King Kong, because maybe there's something else I've seen where he looks a lot bigger on what I believed was the Empire State Building. Turns out it wasn't, unless there's something else he's in with an Empire State Building model. I don't know. I was so surprised at the, the claymation mixed with reality put together. It just looked so good. It wasn't just that they were on the screen together. It was the fact that they interacted with each other in a way that I didn't think they would. So say Godzilla picked up the, the mug like this, and was waving it around in the air, say it was a bench or something, waving it around in the air, and he'd fling it up off camera. And as he flings it up off camera, it would then, in foreground, come crashing down on the actors. So it was really well timed with everything to feel real, even though you knew it was fake. Because there were so many times that I, I, I even said to you guys, I know he's claymation, King Kong, but he's still terrifying. The fight, that fight with the T-Rex, how long must have that have taken them to make that fight? There were so many frames to that claymation and the effectiveness with the, with the sound effects mixed with the visuals and the depth of build of those shots. The one where 
King Kong and the T-Rex sort of fall back towards us as the camera and as it's falling back towards us the girl is there in the foreground as a like a the real life girl with the tree stump type thing that she's sitting on now, as the version of King Kong and stuff behind is moving towards her she then falls because of the them knocking against it so good I'm so happy I'm so happy to watch that tonight. Right, I think, because I can gush while I'm talking through the trivia and I can tell you all my little favourite bits if there's anything else that I really want to tell you guys because there's so many favourite bits in that and so many little things that I noticed as I was going along that I was in awe of that I can kind of tell you as we're going if there's anything else. So let's dive into the trivia of King Kong from 1933. Okay, firstly, massive congratulations to the filmmakers for making an incredible film. Secondly, to the absolutely beautiful Faye Ray for her role in this. Just impeccable acting ability. The screams, the emotion on her face at every possible moment. And the first time I really noticed her facial movements and like the way she was acting stuff out was when she was about to be pulled into the cab by Denim. But you see even more when she's chatting to the guy on the boat, the one that she's going to eventually fall in love with. And then you see even more on the boat when they do the pretend film shoot thing, when she's screaming her, her, her head off. And pff, just great emotion, but there's nothing there for her to react to. But she's she's doing this raw gut-wrenching scream and then even more later when she actually sees Kong and I say that because she's not looking at anything while she's doing this god see I should say the stars are Fay Ray, Rob Armstrong and Bruce Cabo or Cabo and directors are Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Shodzak I probably completely mispronounced that name yeah it was Bruce Cabo or Bruce Cabo who was Jack Driscoll the uh the boyfriend low interest and denim was robert armstrong so apparently this film grossed ninety thousand dollars in its opening weekend the biggest opening ever at the time i'm not surprised marion c cooper's first vision for the film was of a giant ape on top of one of the world's tallest buildings fighting airplanes he worked backward from there to develop the rest of the story how on earth did he work backward to come up with the film i know he wanted to end it there which is an absolutely amazing scene the premise of the entire film to then culminate in that scene with him fighting airplanes on top of a building it's an epic story the the, the vision of that apparently the trees and plants in the background on the stop motion animation sets so it was stop motion i was trying to think of the right name because animation i don't think it was the right name the trees and plants in the background on the stop motion animation sets were a combination of metal models and real plants. One day during filming, a flower on the miniature set bloomed without anyone noticing. Oh my god, <laughs> it's just giant flower. The area in continuity was not noticed until the film was developed and shown, and an entire day of animation was lost, so that wasn't even in the film at all. Oh, that's so, so heart-wrenching. So they did all that work for that scene, only to have to go scrap it. See there was a story I heard a little while ago of it was another animation film I've seen. I don't remember what it was. It was a big stop motion thing I believe. Like a big project or a big film that was done. I think it was Fantastic Mr Fox because I love Fantastic Mr Fox. Uh, but when they made the film they would leave the sets overnight to you know things to like glue to set and all this kind of stuff. But whichever film more thing this was that I remember they would leave this thing overnight and they would come back the next day it could be something to do with Wallace and Gromit and then when they came back something had happened it was humid or something and it had expanded or things had moved because of the heat I could be wrong but I remember something to do with that executive producer David O'Selznick left RKO RKO I kept thinking that the, the logo at the beginning I thought was like RKO's logo executive producer David O'Selznick left RKO midway through production of this film. Selznick's last act of business at RKO was to write a memo changing the name of the production from Kong to King Kong. Oh that's so interesting. Was it RKO? Because remember at the beginning of the film I thought oh, it's RKO and it came up with a different name. But this says that when he left RKO did they change the name? 
I know they changed the name of the production, but did they change the name of the production company? It's been said that this was the first Hollywood film to use a fully symphonic music score. Wow. As memorable and effective as the musical score was, some have made the same claim about RKO's Bird of Paradise, released earlier. Regardless, Max Steiner, composer for both films and many later classics, including Gone with the Wind and Casablanca was a visionary, forward-thinking man. One of the legends surrounding this film is that director, Marion C. Cooper. And Steiner, from his own pocket, after RKO bosses, expressed concern over mounting production costs. Also, the success of this film is often credited for saving RKO pictures from bankruptcy. Hmm. King Kong's Roar was a lion's roar. Hey, there we go. King Kong's Roar was a lion's roar. And a tiger's roar combined slowed down and run backward. Didn't know that about the run backward slowed down thing. But that's so, so cool they did that. Especially for back in the day, making use of all these creative elements and shoving them together in one big film. Again, even more of an applause, even more of a hats off to the filmmakers. And Murray Spivak actually makes most of the Kong sounds. I mean, it's a mixture of lion roars and tiger roars, various animals played backwards, but that's Murray doing the grunts. The one flaw that remains in the animation is the way Kong's fur seems to move constantly, yes. But without going into more detail of that fact for a second, I know that they find this issue quite a lot with that style of animation um, because when they made, like I was saying earlier, they made Fantastic Mr. Fox, they wanted that style of animation where the fur almost bristles with the movement. They wanted that specifically in the film. That's what Wes Anderson wanted because they said they could make it without that, but they wanted it like that. And I believe that's why they used the type of fur they used whilst they were making the film. Oh my God, I just freaked. I just was looking for a clip to do with Wes Anderson and the fur thing because I knew of it from years ago when I was researching about Wes Anderson and the love of Fantastic Mr. Fox, etc. And I found this interview with him where he talks about King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> he mentions it when he's talking about the fur. What a weird coincidence. Anyway, here it is. Stop motion with with fur. That's my favorite kind of animation. Just the way it moves around by itself, um, like King Kong, the old King Kong. Um, something about that has always appealed to me. Anyway, this says, um, the one flaw that remains in the animation is the way Kong's fur seems to be moving constantly, showing where the animators had to grab the figure to move it, yes. Though the animators would brush the fur constantly to hide their work, it still shows up in the finished film. Yeah, because every frame, the fur is in a different position. So it would just look like moving water almost with it moving. You can usually just see patch patches of it doing this throughout the film. <laughs> Many other filmmakers who have used the same technique actually admire this flaw because it shows that the work was done by skilled artists who use their hands. Yes, and I believe that's also the reason why Wes Anderson wanted it for his film, because of that as well. And by the way, if you guys love Wes Anderson, please let me know. I love Wes Anderson. I've only seen a few of his films and I really want to see more. He's got a very unique style and I'd love to check that out because I love cinematography, you know I do. It'd be great to experience it together. Yes, for the scenes of Anne in Kong's hand, the hand was attached to a crane and raised 10 feet. Yeah, I was right with it being like a like an animatronic type hand, like a fake hand thing that was moving. First, the technician put her in the hand and closed the fingers around her. Then the hand was lifted for filming. Yeah, so not a, an animated hand, not an animatronic hand, but I'm on about like a, it was just like a large giant hand that was able to be moved and rolled. Then the hand was lifted for filming. She would later say her terror in those scenes was real. The more she struggled, the looser the hand's grip grew. Oh my God. When she thought she was about to fall, she had to signal Marion C. Cooper to stop filming. <laughs> After completing her scenes, Fay Ray spent a day in the sound studio recording a series of screams. She dubbed her Aria of the Agonies, but her screams are so good. Probably some of the best screams I've ever heard in film. Fay Ray passed away in 2004. On August 10th, 2004, two days after Fay Ray died, the Empire State Building darkened its light in her memory. That's lovely. This says in 1933, King Kong climbed the Empire State Building. 
So that was the Empire State Building. What building am I thinking of then that's behind him to the right? Oh, I'm a complete numpty. It's the Chrysler Building. What a twit. The Chrysler Building stands in Midtown Manhattan. So that's why in the film I say, oh, I thought it was always the Empire State Building. He goes up. People are watching it going, you idiot. That's not the Empire State Building. The one he's on is the Empire State Building. <laughs> the 18 inch model of King Kong was made from a metal mesh skeleton, a mixture of rubber and foam for the muscle structure and rabbit fur for his hair. That's interesting. I didn't think they would have used rabbit hair for the fur. This film was successfully reissued worldwide numerous times. Some claim it was the first ever re-released film in the 1938 reissue, several scenes of excessive violence and sex were cut to comply with the production code enforced in 1934. Though many of the censored scenes were restored by Yanis Films in 1971, including the censored sequence in which Kong peels off Fay Ray's clothes, I did wonder about that. I thought that that's a, for the time as well. That's, that's an incredibly revealing scene. <laughs> then you've got her legs just flailing everywhere and everything, but. I thought, okay, she doesn't reveal too much. But for back then, that was a lot of skin she was showing. One deleted scene has never been found, shown publicly only once during a preview screening in San Bernardino, California in January 1933. It was a graphic scene following Kong shaking four sailors off the log bridge, causing them to fall into a ravine where they were eaten alive by giant spiders. Oh, I'm glad that was cut. I am very, very glad that was cut out because I don't like spiders. I, oh, I have a, I don't have a fear of spiders. I probably do actually. At the preview screening, audience members screamed and either left the theater or talked about the grisly sequence throughout the subsequent scenes, disrupting the film. Marion C. Cooper said it stopped the picture cold. So the next day back at the studio, I took it out myself. I'm glad. The last thing I wanted to do, and not so much the shaking the four sailors off, because he did kind of do similar to that. Like he dropped the girl after he picked her up out the window. Oh yes, 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 I'm sorry. I've just realized that the scene in which they cut was still in the film technically, but the spiders weren't there. Because obviously the scene of the log bridge was there. They all fall to their doom, um, which was horrific in itself. But then the giant spiders were cut. Thank God. But I suppose the way the ravine looked kind of matched it being like a place for spiders, I suppose. The two-legged lizard that creeps up out of the canyon towards Jack Driscoll uh, was actually meant to be an atosaur, atosaur, a reptile from the Triassic period. However, because of the high prices of the armatures, the metal skeletons for the puppets, Archeo cut costs by not having hind legs made for it. As a result, the autosaur had two forearms, no hind legs, and a more snake-like appearance. I genuinely did not see this while watching the film. Maybe they did some touch-up work on it, I'm not sure. The 2005 DVD restoration further details the risque liberties of a 1933 pre-code film release in two scenes. The first is when Anne is on the ship's deck when Charlie is peeling the potatoes, and the second is when Denham is shooting some test footage of Anne. The thin material that was used for Anne's dress and the gown in both scenes make it very obvious that Faye Ray is not wearing a bra. A wardrobe decision that may not have made it past the Breen Code the following year. The old Arabian proverb opening of the film was actually written by Marion C. Cooper. <laughs> Fantastic. This is the only film to debut at the two largest theatres in New York City, the Roxy and Radio City Music Hall. Simultaneously, the total seating capacity was about 10,000. It sold out every performance, 10 per day, at both theatres. I'm not surprised, honestly. If they re-showed this in the cinema now, and if people knew the absolute cinematic masterpiece that that is, I'm sure they'd be flocking to the cinemas now to see it. I think if I get the chance to ever see that at the cinema, I'm going to take it. According to Orville Goldner in The Making of King Kong, the film came in at 13 reels. Oh my god, that's a lot of footage. Marion C. Cooper feigned horror at the number 13. Oh right, and insisted another scene be shot. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Imagine that, you've just got done. Ah, oh, that's it. Finally finished the film. Okay, that's a wrap. Everyone go home. And then we've got to show another scene. They probably didn't wait that long to, you know, announce that we're going to do another scene because of the 13 reels. They probably just found out, oh, hang on, this is the 13th reel. 
We'll shoot another scene. Oh, the new scene was the elevated train sequence, which Cooper had wanted all along. Perfect, there you go. Oh, personally, I love that scene. Really well done. Just the bit that horrified me was at the very end of that scene, when he pulverizes the train. You obviously know the actors, the, the citizens are in the, in the train itself, and he's there punching the heck out of this thing until there's absolute silence just a couple of screams from I presume buildings nearby could be from the train itself it was just slightly disconcerting slightly horrifying yes so around 80 minutes into the film a man Leroy Mason standing in line to see Kong complains to his lady companion these tickets cost me 20 bucks and presumably ten dollars per ticket this would have been a tremendous cost in depression racked 1933 is what I was saying about the price even though yeah, okay, it was only 20 bucks, blah, blah, blah. But that $20 back then was a hell of a lot of money. Oh my God. For the shots of the airplanes taking off from the strip, the pilots were paid $10 each. I'm not entirely sure how much that would be today. They go, so back in the day, those pilots were paid $10. But in today's money, that would be $237.24. Also, it says before a scene could be started, all the lights on the soundstage had to be replaced with new ones to make sure they wouldn't flicker during the scene. The amount of work that went into all of this. Oh my God. The stage then had to be sealed and nobody could leave or enter to prevent any wind from moving the foliage. Each night, the Kong models had to have their skins removed so Marcel Delgado could tighten the hinges on the metal armatures. Oh God, the amount of work. I don't envy them whatsoever. I applaud them. Oh, let's mention Peter Jackson. It says Peter Jackson was the one that did the, the newer Kong film. Well, the 22 inch 56 centimeter high model of King Kong used in the film sold at auction in 2009 for about $203,000. It was originally covered in cotton, rubber, liquid latex and rabbit fur, but most of the covering has decomposed over the decades. A similarly constructed model of a Triceratops is owned by Peter Jackson, which he used in his own recreation of the lost spider pit sequence. Peter, please, just don't. Don't, please. Don't recreate the spider sequence, please. I'm looking it up. Oh God, oh God. I just want to see if... Wow, he's done an incredible job with it. How the hell did he do that? Yes, we got actors from nowadays to recreate the scenes with <laughs> like giant crabs. And then, yeah, the model of the spider, etc. Which is probably a little bit better. Okay, really quickly, I'd like us to watch it. And don't worry, the spider is just this really crude claymation spider so we should be fine i'll leave a link to it in the description below hopefully i remember to do that apologies if i don't but just look up peter jackson spider pit recreation and it should come up with it now i'm only going to play you guys a sort of cut up version of me watching it and you can watch it with me but go and check it out for yourself in full <laughs> You can see what is, you see sort of what is sort of modern day in comparison, but it's so difficult to tell still. Half of these shots would be perfect as the ones back then. That's the old film still. That's the new one though. The modern work for it is beautiful. Also having the thing at the side explains why they didn't just run off. All this bit is the same as the original, so. And they're the things that I was saying. It's kind of like um, cobwebs. I was saying it, it reminds me of an area that spiders would be in because of the cobwebs. This is the bit here. So this is the, this is the new section with the actors. And they made all of these bits of footage to go with it. Brilliant. Here's the spider, yeah. Terrifying, but... See, this doesn't scare me because I know it's a model. <laughs> it looks like claymation. It's still creepy as hell, but... Oh no, what is that? Is... yeah... What is that? It wasn't a spider. And that's it, I think, cuts into the normal scene. I think this is the... I think that's it. <laughs> this is one of my favourite bits with the sort of the merge of real and stop motion. Yeah, I think that was it. That was all of the additions. Because was that meant to be the same creature that we saw below? 
That's the one with the forearms. So I thought the other one later was the one, but that would have been the one with the forearms. So there you go. That was the Peter Jackson recreation of the Lost Spider Pit sequence. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that bit with me. That was just an addition on the end of this. Um, yeah, well, I'll say on the end, but we're still going to go through some trivia. But yeah, there's so many bits of trivia. So I'll give you some of the best ones and then I'll let you guys go and do your own research and find some more wonderful trivia for yourselves. Although many film historians insist that a spider pit sequence was never shot, much less previewed, at least three production stills do exist showing the miniature ravine complete with at least one spider and a crab creature, both of which are menacing miniature sailors. There was one person who claimed to have seen the first preview screening who said that the spider pit scene was in it and the audience laughed at large bug eyes on the spider model. He felt that this unintended laugh was the reason the scene stopped the film and was cut. Oh, so the inspiration for the train scene in the film was as a child, Marion C. Cooper lived close to an elevated train track, which kept him awake at night when the train clattered across the tracks. This was the inspiration for the scene where Kong destroys an elevated train. Oh my god! You know what I said about the um the Loch Ness Monster in the film? Apparently authors Daniel Loxton and Daniel Prothero in their 2013 book Abominable Science argue that the UK release of King Kong in the spring of 1933 led directly to the supposed sightings of a sea monster in Loch Ness, Scotland. So this came out first. The first documented sightings of the supposed Loch Ness monster occurred within six months of the film's release. Holy mother of God. So <laughs> what I was saying was, oh yeah, it kind of reminds me of the Loch Ness Monster. They got the idea, probably, from this film. Supposed witnesses, Mr. and Mrs. George Spicer, who claimed to have seen the creature walking on land, described it moving from left to right. The descriptions and blurry photos of Nessie that emerged from 1933 on seemed likely inspired by the scene in King Kong, in which a prehistoric water beast, a meat-eating brontosaurus, attacks the searchers on a raft. Notably, the Brontosaurus also walks from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Massively interesting, that's fascinating. The animated models had to be shot one frame at a time, with minute adjustments between each shot. It took an entire afternoon to get the 24 exposures needed to fill one second of screen time. The battle between King Kong and the Pterodactyl took seven weeks to film. This method of stop motion photography proved to be a time-honoured method of visual effects and was used for many decades by other effect artists like Ray Harryhausen and Phil Tippett. So if that scene, I'm fairly sure that was shorter than the scene between King Kong and the T-Rex, how long did the T-Rex scene take to film? So apparently, the recreation that Peter Jackson did of the spider pit scene, the one we watched earlier, was then released on the 2005 DVD of this film. Okay, so this whole bit of trivia talks about all of the cut scenes and what happened with re-releases, etc. Scenes cut over the years of release and re-release. Kong chewing on the natives of the island. Two scenes with Kong squashing one native, each with his giant foot the Brontosaurus biting and throwing the men in the water, Kong putting a New Yorker in his mouth then throwing him down to the ground, a scene where Kong climbs a building, pulls a sleeping woman out with his giant hand, examines her, and when he finds it's not Anne Darrow, tosses her down to the sidewalk below, and, of course, Fay Ray's clothing being peeled off. The censor committee once stated that this was at least six minutes of editing, as in six minutes of footage cut from the film, presumably. These scenes were all restored to the actual film in 1971, although the famous or infamous spider pit sequence has yet to be found. Fay Ray claims that she personally insisted that her character be a blonde and personally chose her wig at the Max Factor shop in Los Angeles. The jungle scenes that were filmed in this film were also filmed on the same set as the jungle scenes from The Most Dangerous Game from 1932, which also happened to star Fay Ray and Robert Armstrong. You know the giant head sequences that we kept seeing of King Kong where he's like, ooh, ooh and he's moving around funny. Well, apparently Willis H. O'Brien never liked the giant head 
uh, bust of Kong, which he thought had limited dramatic possibilities. Oh, Marion C. Cooper had originally planned for Kong to be exhibited in Yankee Stadium, but later decided on a Midtown Theatre. Special effects chief Willis H. O'Brien drew a sketch of Kong breaking loose in the stadium. By the way, just to say, you know the scene where they're doing the screen test and Faye Ray is wearing the beautiful dress that she's wearing? Well, costume designer Walter Plunkett was uncredited on this film. He was later noteworthy for Gone with the Wind as well, but he specifically designed the Beauty and the Beast costume that Anne Darrow wears while Carl Denham is filming the screen test. So whether this is correct or not, so you know we had the other scene mentioned about how long that took to film and we said seven weeks. Well, I've looked up how long the Kong versus Tyrannosaurus Rex scene took and this says seven weeks to be completed as well. So I don't know. <laughs> At the time of the film's release, select theatres offered free promotional 150-piece jigsaw puzzles featuring Kong battling the T-Rex. Examples in good condition have recently sold for over $4,000. What? Do you know what I would have wanted to see if I'd gone to the cinema to see it? I wanted, before the film started, an opening reel of Kong just on the stage. It's like, it, it looks like Kong is on a stage in the cinema screen. That would have been cool, like a still that you see before the film. You can still have the music playing and the lights up, etc. But you just see that. Just just that, that's like the, the standing screen. Oh, I didn't know this. There was more than one model of Kong used in the film. I kind of thought there'd be multiple, but I didn't know there were considerable differences between the two. The Kong on the island and the Kong in New York City are different because the Skull Island Kong has a longer face which the filmmakers thought made the ape look too human. There you go. You learn something new every day. Hey, I was talking about rear projection in the film, wasn't I? The scene with Fay Ray and the T-Rex became the first ever to use the rear projection at RKO Pictures. The short sequence took three days to shoot. Holy mackerel. <laughs> the guy says that in the film, doesn't he? Holy mackerel. <laughs> the matte paintings in King Kong were crafted by a team of skilled artists that included Byron Crabb, Henri Hillink, and a man who would continue to work alongside O'Brien for the next 20 years. Mario Laranaga was a very good artist in the art department there at RKO when O'Brien uh, started to work on creation and he sort of discovered his talents and moved him onto his crew. Oh, speaking of Empire State Building, apparently the Empire State Building had only been completed two years previously to this film coming out. So 1931, because this came out in 33. Bear in mind, it was a complete novelty to see Kong climbing atop the building. I was right. You know, the scene I said sounded like a cat or like a, like a big cat. And I couldn't remember what the name of it was. It's a puma. That's what it was. Puma, puma, however you say it. That was what it was. That's what I was thinking of in my head. It says the T-Rex's hissing was achieved by combining a puma scream with high compression air. The brontosaurus sounds were created by grunting into a double chambered gourd. Wow. Most probably the version that we just saw was a completely reconstructed version of the film because it says here, the original print was lost due to the poor practice of keeping old films in storage where many of them decomposed. Fortunately, more acceptable pieces of film were kept in Britain, Belgium and France, so they were all combined to create one pristine master. This took two years to complete. Yeah, so that means that, that that film we just saw would be from various different places and that's also the reason why that spider pit scene probably doesn't exist as well is because they cut it got rid of it or whatever and there was no versions that had it because nowhere was allowed to show it whereas the other versions would still probably be on film and they just cut some bits out you know the bits of the clothing being removed and stuff <laughs> okay so you know what i'm saying about the most dangerous game with the jungle setting apparently before the script was completed, Marion C. Cooper started filming action sequences with Fay Ray and Robert Armstrong during filming breaks in the filming of The Most Dangerous Game, which had the jungle setting as well. Way to get ahead of yourself. <laughs> that's, that's genius. That's genius. If I knew I was doing a film with the same two actors, same kind of setting, I think I would have done the same thing as well. There you go, last but not least, this is the last fact that I'll give you guys. The finished film utilized less than 10 
thousand feet of film, although 238,000 feet were shot. I'll put that into context for you. Anyway, guys, there is there is tons. I've literally gone through a quarter of these facts. There are so 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 many. Please go and check them out for yourselves. There are so many absolutely fantastic facts. Like this one, for instance, I didn't read. The title character does not appear until 46 minutes into the film. Just before we go, this confirms about a height thing that I was saying about. You remember I said he looks a lot smaller. Well, Kong's official height from the posters is 50 feet, which could be where the idea came from, from whatever I saw. That I saw a shot and King Kong was almost wrapped around the building. It was huge. This says he was closer to 19 feet. So instead of 50 feet, it's closer to 19 feet tall in the jungle and close to 25 feet when in New York City. So there you go. A little bit of fun fact. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. And if you did like this kind of thing, then consider clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel if you want to. It's absolutely free. I do lots of cinematic classics here on the channel. And I also do normal films as well. Loads of films that I've suggested. All of the films that I watch are either suggested by you guys or the patron requests over on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, if you want to go over there and check out all of the uncut reactions that I've got over there, which is basically you just watching the film with me, you just got to queue up your own version of it. And you see my second by second reaction to things. And you also got my early accesses over there. And you can also get your name in the credits of my videos as well. I really appreciate you guys being here and you watching this absolute masterpiece with me. So thank you. It's a lot of video. And as you can tell, it does take a lot of time, effort and energy to make these. Thank you guys for being here, for sticking with me this long and for just being amazing. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. If you're still here to the very end, then thank you so much, and also a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons. Roger C. Griffith, Douglas Collier, Terry V, Miggy Love, Chris Holmes, Jojo, Thomas Masters, Shoehorn1234, Ress, Patrick Durr, Andrew Blount, Carlos, Marla Mize, Rob, Chandra Blair, Scott, Paul Zawicki, Randy, Kirsten, Juan Pablo Camero, JL, Maggie, Freya Alexandra, Milo, Miranda, Edna, Gina Aman, Tess Avaland, Olivia, Maria Stoicheva, Neno, Megan Janoviak, Rainy Tomo, Strawberry Tree, Kirsten Bailey, Boobly Boo, Louise Vanderhoven, Aubrey Terry, Raithist, Heidi Steele, City D, Bumblebee, Joshua, Jesse, Rena Burra, Meat, Lolita Verbakovskia, Eli, Holly Jeffries, Alenka Hafner, HM Garth, Chloe Grover, Neb, Kyle Baker, Abby Barker, Tom Tattershall, Kristen Olds, Tilly Chum, Laura Hutchison, Tara M. Will Coxon, Sazzy Nation, Ferdinand Pitchard, Jimma K, Sphere, Mel Days, Fran in the Pen, BG, Tara, Rags and Muffins, Nameless Human Being, Deb, Philippa Chapman, Emily, Panda, David Wayne Fox, Jessica Asakovich, Sue Pro, Naja in Workshop, Mike Tunnicliffe, Wolfgang Wolf, Lee, and Harvey. If you'd like to see more videos, there's some more on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and see you next time.